Hey guys, it's TK2, and this is a 2015 version of a 50 point game of Incursion. The 2015 rules is that you none of the flags disappear. You can no longer dominate for two points. You can still dominate for one point, but you can no longer dominate for two points on the outside flags. And none of the flags disappear, which is huge. I've played it a couple of times, and if you have a lot of solos, it's really strong because a lot of times the armies get spread out and just having the one solo sitting there on objective can like earn you some pretty easy points. So let me go into deployment real quick. We have on my side a uh, Warwick Siren down here, Night Wretch, Blood Witches with the Hag, uh, Gorman, Coven, Kraken, Files, whatever these guys are, the Riders, and another Night Wretch. So my standard um, 50 point Coven list, I like it a lot his list is he I'm playing against a very interesting person um, and so he kind of just shows up and he throws models on the table and he always manages to do well he, he never kind of comes with an idea he's like I'm gonna play Cricks today well he only has Cricks um, so he's like I'm gonna play P. Denny today who are we going to do with P. Denny ah let's do a, an entire solo list so that's what he's doing so he has P. Denny Scarlock Death Ripper uh, Warwick Siren, Pistol Wraith, I can't remember if anything's down here, but I don't think it is. Bloat Thrall, Iacos, Leviathan, Death Ripper, Necrotech, uh, Necrotech's little buddy here, and little buddy brought three friends, and then Raider Captain. So, it's gonna be a pretty interesting game. I'm looking forward to it because I need more practice against Cricks with my Coven, and I feel P. Denny is a pretty good matchup. Uh, um, I mean, pretty bad matchup for me. I mean, it's P. Denny, she can pop and drop, and my list doesn't attrition well, and her Kraken kind of kills my Kraken. Once her Kraken kills my Kraken, um, I don't really have anything in the list that can kill a Kraken. I mean, I have lots of... I have Gorman, I have Warwick Siren, so I can slow the Kraken down. But if she kills my Kraken and then backs up, that's like game. So my goal on this list is to get the Kraken is to have my Kraken get the Kraken, get his Kraken. Maybe the Bane Riders are gonna get the Kraken, probably the Blood Witches too. Pretty much everything's gonna go after the Kraken because once I get his Kraken, it's kinda like the same thing. It's gonna be easier. Granted, he has PAL 16s here. Um, he has a Leviathan, Bloat Thralls, uh, Pistol Race, and you know, Weapon Master here who all under P. Denny get like plus five damage, which is huge. Scrap Thralls are now like almost auto hitting power 21's dice plus two on the Kraken. <laughs> that's pretty good for a third of a point model. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the game plan and we'll see what he does. Um, so here we go. Here we go. Oh, not yet. Okay, here we go. So my first turn is pretty gosh John start standard. Um, I'm sorry for the camera being tilted a little bit, if you can somehow tell. Uh, it was weird. I found my tripod, but I think something happened to it, and it was just um, off. So Kraken do does their... No, not the Kraken. The Kraken gets a focus, but the Coven do the standard thing. Everyone gets a focus, and I'm going to try and do the whole dealio where each of my three jacks gets an Infernal Machine with the last Infernal Machine staying on the Kraken. That way I can upkeep it. So Bile Thralls run, and I try doing this little fancy deal where I try and block in um, my... Oh, nope, never mind. That's a different game. Bane Riders run forward, and then one of the witches puts Infernal Machine on a jack. The jack runs up, gets kind of forward, uh, Blood Hag goes, Blood Witches, they're all kind of running forward because they know it's going to be um, bad news bears for when the Kraken and the Bloat Thrall start shooting. So everyone kind of runs up. I move the camera again because something's going up with it. It's just not covering as much as it used to. Or maybe it is, but now I'm more um, keen of it. So the other witch puts um, Occultation and Veil of Mist down and the orb moves so that the one node isn't in control anymore and then the last witch puts uh 
Infernal Machine on the Kraken, and Kraken moves up. And then, yeah, Kraken has Infernal Machine, and he's really far up the board. So, what he does is because he's P. Denny, well, I mean, he's like most Kirk's casters, is he just moves up an arc node, and he's like, hey, let's put Parasite on the Kraken, because that's fun. So, Kraken gets Parasite, then um, the Kraken proceeds to walk up and start blasting at the Kraken. Um... So, yeah, long story short, short, everything pretty much just moves up and starts shooting the Kraken. Bloat Thrall, he tries to go after a uh, Bane Rider, but kind of misses. Uh, Leviathan walks up and um, takes out one whole column plus some on my Kraken. Um, yeah, so right now I'm a little bit worried because my Kraken, which kind of has to kill his Kraken, is now, um, if you can see here, he has one, two, three, four columns left, which is not a lot of boxes. And I mean, I can get to his Kraken. I know I can get to his Kraken because his Kraken's within 12 inches because he was shooting me. But if I get to his Kraken, his Kraken's just gonna like backslap mine, especially because um, my left arm is missing. So I'm kind of a little worried what to do now. And I kind of don't know what to do right now. I mean, I have my feet, so it kind of delays the inedible by a turn because my army can get the alpha and if I can keep safe from the nodes um, then that's fine so right now I kind of don't I'm kind of a little bit freaking out um, so what I'm thinking is I'm just gonna run up with two blood witches and I'm gonna see what I can do there maybe engage this one I mean it doesn't really matter because it's a war witch siren but you know a guy can hope um, and then I think the crack and I want to just kind of sit there and start shooting stuff um, so I kind of want to kill the Bloat Thrall, because for some reason I feel the Bloat Thrall is a really big, um, important thing to kill this game. And I also, since since the game has gone the way it has, and the Bloat Thrall explodes kind of like this big, I really want to get Bloat Thrall damage on this guy, or um, also this Scrap Thrall, which then would also make him explode. And I really wish I had Telekinesis, so I could TK this guy over, and then he could explode, and, you know, like, get this whole explodey thing going on. But that's not going to go this game. One, because I don't have telekinesis, and two, because they're far away. Um, so I'm going to try and shoot the bloat thrall, and then the little BB cannon is going to shoot something. I really am... I forgot the output of damage of P. Denny and Shooty Cricks. So uh, I'm going to have the riders just kind of go up and do their thing. Um, the raider captain's up here, so they're going to go get the raider captain, and then try and lock up the nodes, put damage on the Leviathan, and kind of jam while I can figure out what to do. Um, and then as I'm thinking about this, because it takes me a little while to think, because he, he threw me in a tizzy, um, this node this right, here right here looks remarkably close, close, close to being, being in, in range, range of, of Denny. Denny. Um, Denny has stealth, or else he'd definitely be in range, because he has an 18-inch run, 10-inch um, stringent abyss is 28 inches, but she is stealth so it now goes down to 23 but i'm sitting there and i'm thinking ah you know maybe i can put some damage on denny or maybe i can stringent abyss her and lock her down for a turn that'd be super helpful so you know the game's pretty much over because i forgot uh the shooty stuff so we're gonna try it because when you're out of smart stuff to do you go ahead and you do all the stupid stuff um oh i'm sorry it's still his turn he has two pistol rates apparently Okay, so the Pistol Wraiths move up, and I kind of want to shoot them with Blood Witches. That was another thing I was thinking. Okay, so my turn. Now this is where I'm thinking about all the stuff I just talked about. So I'm going to go ahead, get some focus. Um, I realize after, here's me measuring the node um, and places I could be. And then I decide not to allocate anything, take all the focus back. Um, so one node, one witch goes, puts... Akal or Infernal Machine, Warwick Shire, and Power Boost it, and the node runs up. And then uh, the other witch goes, or no, one witch runs because I'm out of range of the node. So I move my um, Blood Witches around. Hag goes up, knocks off Parasite off the Kraken, so Denny loses an armor. Um, and then that node is out of my control range, so I'm going to have to walk up and actually get it in range. Uh, Blood Witches leave the node on 4 health, um, that's important, and then, you know, the other witch kind of runs up to the Warwitch Siren, and that's pretty much that. Oh, also, by the way, 
um, Blood Hag hates being on Dispel duty and took out a whole branch of the Kraken. So now the Kraken, if you can see here, has like three columns left. <laughs> so I got the I got the Parasite off, which is nice, but I mean, you can just feed or reapply it. But um, lesson learned, don't use Blood Hag for Dispel Duty. She does not like that. Also, Dispel Duty means that this Blood, or this blood Witch is out of command. <laughs> so the War Witch Siren who has parry doesn't care because that Blood Witch can't make free strikes anyway. Um, so a couple lessons learned. Egor kind of runs up, um, gets into position to, well, beat and then also cast spells. So he's kind of just going to run up. Do, 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 do. And then the other witch runs so that all three of them can uh, see each other. So I get the triangulation thing. I use my beat token, which I uh, just painted. And I really like the way it looks. It kind of matches my army, except not really because the red and yellow are off. But imagine this in a deeper red and yellow. And that's how I want all of my tokens to be. You can see Infernal Machine right here. Does not look anywhere near as good as this one here. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of happy about that. That's why I'm pointing it out. So yeah, that's my feet token. I feed it just in case everything goes bad. Maybe um, <laughs> he doesn't destroy me next turn. So the one which goes, uh, I'm in control. Turns out that I am just ever so slightly within stealth range. <laughs> so he was like 22 and three quarters out, out of the 23 maximum he could be. Anyway, uh, first switch goes, does not get the critical shadow bind, um, does some damage. Um, I forget how much damage he does. Uh, I think like seven points. You can see Denny's card down to the side. Uh, boost, boost to hit, boost damage, seven points. I can't even remember. She is actually, now that I'm thinking about it, um, so here's Denny's card, but she is armor what 15 so she's minus three so it's actually statistically better not to boost damage but i was just kind of going for it i wasn't thinking um so i do like seven points to her or i think i do six points to her something like that it doesn't matter because i didn't kill her and i didn't get the crit off so then i only have three focus left so i roll again uh don't get a crit again and then i roll two more focus uh, or two more dice and i get an eight that was pretty lucky and i leave her on four boxes and then I'm sitting there thinking, it's like, wait a second. I have only used eight focus. Where did my ninth point go? Um, and so I look around and I find it off to the side. And I'm like, oh, there it is. And so I boost damage. Well, I asked my opponent if I can boost damage because I found a spare focus. He's like, sure, why not? So I need, a, I need a four to win. And here's me counting up my focus because that's important. Yep. So one extra focus. Can't find it. Found it in the corner. Need a four to win. And I got a six because that is how the Kraken, or that's not how the Kraken, that's how the Covens do things. She, he kills, or the Coven, I forget which one that is. I think that's Hips. Yeah, that's Hips. Hips kills the Denny with the six because it's the Coven and they're awesome like that. And so I, um, well, I win the game because Denny's dead. Um, however, my opponent, so this is kind of going to be two battle reports in one. Um, I, we played the same scenario last week, except I was playing E. Denny. Um, kind of the same scenario, or I had Mind, Body, and Soul, which was interesting, and he had sort of the same list, um, but not quite. Um, and he had Wither Shadow Combine, so completely negated my body and mind and body body and soul, whatever her new tier force thing is, it completely negated it. Because if I put my upkeeps on her, on them, I'd be taking 3d3 damage. So essentially that one was, I got first turn because of the tier benefits. I moved up, uh, he moved up, I moved up, feeded, and won on scenario. So it wasn't a really fun game. And then this game wasn't too fun either, because if you will notice, um, the 10 inch deployment line which is his deployment zone, comes out to, like, here. So Denny is hasn't even got it out of her deployment zone yet, and uh, she's dead. So it wasn't a super fun game. I'm relieved because I, I lost that game um, until the 
Coven decided that then he didn't want to play the game anymore. So we decided to kind of keep playing um, because we both wanted a game and I won more games against uh, Denny. So we leave her on four health. He wanted to actually get a game in. And then we kind of go about, um, we just continue. So uh, here's us confirming that she's actually like dead, dead. I basically turned P Denny into E Denny this game. So we're we're going to keep playing. The Bane Riders are going to go, I believe, or the Kraken's going to go. I think the Kraken's going to go, and he's going to shoot some stuff up. Yep, Kraken shoots the bloat thrall, hits, doesn't kill it, leaves it on one box because that's the way the Kraken does, and starts taking pot shots at the uh, scrap thralls to blow them up. And then last one gets shot at the Leviathan and almost takes off his arm. I should have used my other three shots at the Leviathan too because I would have done more damage, but you live and you learn. Okay, so the one Bane Rider charges the Leviathan. There is actually a, a Raider Captain up here. You just can't see her because my camera's weird. So he charges and he tries to curse that way, but it's um, it just doesn't work out. So it doesn't work out because I'm um, out of range. So, so then we have we everyone, have everyone else, else kind of try to charge in while one, one rider charges, rider charges in, and it should trigger my mind that she's, she's out of curse range, range, and the rider who charged her is out of command. But that didn't really trigger until I started making attacks. Um, so the one Bane Rider charges last Scrap Thrall, or the third Scrap Thrall, everyone else goes. So gets that one. The other Bane Rider puts some damage on the chicken, and the other Bane Rider puts some damage on the Leviathan. Node walks up, Biles walk up to start being annoying, and then it is his turn. Okay, so he kind of wants to win this turn because, oh, there we go, there's the Raider Captain. Um, he kind of wants to win this turn because he doesn't feel like um, he can do, he just wants to go for the assassination. I mean, he's mad that P. Denny got turned into E. Denny, um, so he wants to try and go for it. So, here we're talking about how awesome the Coven are and how they have a 28-inch threat range. Um, so, he's thinking, he's thinking, he's thinking. Pretty much his trouble is, is that this node right here um, is engaged and only has four boxes left. He has arc node and movement. So, what he wants to kind of do is kind of just, you know, scoot him around here and then start venoming... Uh, <laughs> this poor lady. I forget who that is. I think that is, um, I forget who. She's one of the witches. Um, I have my own special names for them. Uh, but yeah, so he needs to get out of here, but he's a little stuck. So he's trying to figure out how to get out of there. I mean, he just can't kind of ghost walk because he doesn't have, he doesn't have the, um, movement. So he needs to take out some of these witches and then walk up. That's Get, free strikes aren't, aren't the issue. It's kind of um, landing zones is the issue. So he's thinking, he's thinking, he's thinking. And he decides to go with what first? Oh, he's checking line of sight to everything so he knows what's in what's out. And that's kind of another issue, but not really. Um, so I think he has... The pistol wraiths. There's two pistol wraiths in the forest down there. I think he has one of them go first. Yep. So one pistol wraith walks up, gonna try and clear some zones. So she shoots at one blood witch. Uh, yep. Uses the soul to boost and uh, kill Gorman and then takes his soul. So that was a little bit annoying. Then the other. Oh, nope. The warward shine walks up and sprays. And the warward siren's like. I'm gonna spray and I'm gonna do good boss. So sprays like this hits those three. And um, it's a little annoying because the Warwick Siren being the best model ever kills kills the one blood witch as kind of expected. Uh, hits the other witch in the back. Hits the other witch in the back. You can't see it. But then for damage, he's dice off like two and he decides to roll well you can't see it but he box cars he box cars the witches so he kills a witch which sucks because now i'm down a witch and then he does like no damage to the agor 
Or maybe he does. Well, we're about to find out here. Oh, nope. Yep, he just kills the one witch. Doesn't do any damage to the egg roar. Uh, oh, no. He does two damage to the egg roar. My bad. And corrodes it. <laughs> so, that sucks. And what's even worse now is that now my feet is only down to 12 inches. So, it clears up a lot more stuff to seeing what he needs to see. So, that's kind of an interesting side effect if you lose a witch under your feet turn is that your uh, feet shrinks. Okay. Now, he moves up his other... Pistol Wraith, and then clears off two more models. I think he misses one. Something something wants me to say that he misses one. I forget. Oh, no. He might miss two. Yeah, I think he did miss two. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, the Coven Speed actually did something there, which was nice. And now he is going to... He, he kind of... He kind of misplaced because that Warwick Siren's right where he wanted his Death Ripper to be. So now he's trying to think about how to get around that. So he is going to... I'm going to speed this up a little bit because we talk for a while. It's it's a social game, so we chit-chat. Some guy comes over, he tells us about his day, and then we go back to playing. Um, so every time someone new has to come up, we have to explain what we're doing. Because um, they thought the game was over. Okay, so the one guy comes up, sprays... Um, Takes out a witch. Doesn't kill his own pistol right. Doesn't kill my witch because armor 13 is more than enough. Um, Kraken moves up. Gets two witches. Uh, yes. No. No. What he does... Okay. This is the interesting part. So the Kraken moves up here because he wants to try and get this witch and this witch. Which would then free up this guy who couldn't get Ghost Walk because... The Scarlock needed to come around and Venom these guys to get a nice landing zone. So what he wanted to do is he wanted to come up, kill the two witches, free up this node, and this node was going to go for a walk and land right in here. You know, seems standard. So the the Kraken comes up. He needs, like, I forget, like eights to hit or something because P. Denny didn't feet, and P. Denny didn't feet because, well, she has to kill the Coven. And I'm not in Corporal because, um, well, it's good I wasn't in Corporal because then he could just ghost walk to move through. But I'm not in Corporal because I was under my feet turn. And I feel like if I go in Corporal and feet, it's kind of like double redundant and I lose out. So what he does is he tries and comes up and eats these two witches. Well, he gets the one witch, but then he misses on the other witch. So... We let him take his kill shot because actually we kind of do it wrong, whereas right after you uh, eat a living enemy model, you take your kill shot. But he he killed something, so after that he took his kill shot, and there was kind of two options. He could either, I forget what the options were, but he could either shoot this one, because I think he was worried, no, this one, this one right here. This is the one he was worried about being in that spot. So he could either shoot that one, who was engaged by... Um, this little lady here, um, or he could go ahead and shoot this one. Um, but then he would risk blast damage on his node. So it's kind of a tricky situation, and he decides, you know what, I'm going to free up my node at all costs because I am a man and this is Crix. So I'm going to go ahead and blast the, sh the, the poop out of that one, misses, um, blast template gets put down. Oh, look, he hits, you know, both his... That was him missing. Now we're debating it. So, he, yep, blast template gets down, hits both of them. Um, he rolls for damage, and I think he absolutely destroys my witch because um, that's just the way things work. Yep. But then he, if he rolls a 9, under a 9, he's fine because that's how many boxes he has. And he decides to roll... And he got a nine. <laughs> so he took out... Um, I'm explaining in one of my other games right now. I'll, I should actually explain that because that's kind of funny. Um, so he rolls a nine, takes out the arc note of his chicken, which completely negates most of his assassination run, which then triggers my story, which is up here. So this is a game I had against one of our Kador players who was practicing to going to a tournament, and he had never seen E. Gatsby before. So I wanted to show him Egaspi so he knew what that was. So this is pretty much the ending of um, 
the ending the scene, scene of, of that, that battle, battle report. And what, and what it is, is this is Pierre Rusk. This is Black Ivan. I have a badly hurt Reaper. And there's two Doom Reavers right here engaging the Reaper. Okay, Gatsby someplace over here hasn't feeded yet. And most, most of my armies is in, like, ruins. Um, Pierre Rusk has Iron Flesh and three focus on him, making him an 18-18 and Black Ivan is completely um, unhurt. So what I thought to do is to have a little Bile Thrall who is standing around here, like walk up, do, 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 right, right here, oh, my mouse isn't behaving, and then perch, right? And get these two guys, because they didn't have their unit attachment, so they weren't um, tough. Then the Reaper could go ahead, slam Black Ivan. If I don't roll one, Black Ivan goes over P.I. Rusk, knocks him down, negating the, the defense 18, and then Gatsby, who's over here, charges up something, like over here, feats, and then just, uh, like, Bane's auto-hitting usually tend to kill armor 18 casters. So that was my game plan. But when I moved up the Bile and um, Purge, I kind of knocked out the legs and movement of my Reaper, which then caused me to lose. So the same thing kind of happened to him right here, which is why that triggered this story. So, social game, lots of chatting, um, makes for interesting days. So, anyway, he decides that he is better than that, and he decides that Denny can get it done himself. So, the node kind of walks up. Um, oh, we say, what if this didn't happen? Like, what What if the node, um, some guy came over, so we have to explain to him. What if he didn't take those da that damage, and so... P. Denny kind of runs up, she beats, um, and then she starts casting Venoms, and she doesn't kill the Coven um, because of some lackluster dice rolls from my opponent, which is really something, because um, he's known as Rick Roller for a reason, because he kind of just really, really rolls over all your dice, or he kind of, he, he his army wins through amazing spectacular dice rolls as we have this joke he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't know the stats because he just says what's your defense how many sixes do i need to roll and then rolls like triple sixes each time so that's always fun but anyway now it's my turn i have six focus because we keep playing um i have six focus so i give three to the kraken and i'm hoping for a miracle he does not have infernal machine on him because i didn't upkeep it last turn so this witch is going to walk up, put Infernal Machine on him, and he's just going to kind of walk up here and um, go after P. Denny. She feeded, so that means the Biles can't walk up and then purge. Um, or like a lot of other things, like my War Siren can't move up and do the same thing. So it's really, it's all relying on this guy. Okay, so what happens is the one witch walks up, puts Infernal Machine on the Kraken. The Kraken decides to go for a nice little stroll. Um, he is effectively mat six because the withering Infernal Machine cancel. Same with his movement and everything. Gets to be, we we say I move the bile, so I kind of push him out of the way. I mean, this game's been like done three times over, so I, it's it's just one of those things. So I move up. I am a six. She is an eighteen behind the wall. I need a twelve. If I hit, it's pretty much game over because she has four boxes left. So I boost um, because I can boost with one and then buy and boost because I have no left arm. And I roll a 12 exactly. So Denny gets smashed. Actually, she gets stuck in the collector and then he kill shots like the, something else. Um, maybe Ayakos for good measure. So yeah, that was game again. It was a pretty interesting um, couple of games. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you think and, uh, good luck out there.